What's up guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we'll be showing you how to create 3D text in Adobe Illustrator. You can download a free template file from the description below that you can use to follow along with this video. Okay, I'm going to pass you over to Rory now who will take you through the process. Thanks Ross. So on screen we have our template file up and we have the examples of what we're going to create in this video. So as you can see, some pretty interesting looking 3D text that we can create from any text in Adobe Illustrator. Now we're using a font called Mesmerize Semi Expanded Extra Bold, as you can see. You can download this for free from FontSpring. We'll have a link in the description if you want to use this same font. But really this technique can apply to any font, although we would recommend recommend using a heavier sans serif font like this as it tends to work a little bit better and it's a lot easier to edit. So to apply this effect I don't actually have to convert this text to outlines initially so I can just go up to effect down to 3D and we have a few options here but in this case we're going to select extrude and bevel. So as you can see we get this pop-up box and we have a few parameters to play around with here. So first of all I've got this cube on the left hand side that if I click and drag I can change the orientation of the text and the perspective we're looking at it from. You'll also notice if I hover over any of these corners they are going to highlight and I can make adjustments to only that axis if I want so this is also quite useful. Now up at the top we actually have a position drop down where we have a few preset options here so I can actually select things like front where it's just going to be completely front on which isn't what we want in this case but we also have things like off axis front where we're seeing a little bit more depth. But the options I tend to use the most are the isometric options down at the bottom here. So as you can see, if I click these, we're getting a slightly more exaggerated perspective and isometric design is quite a common practice nowadays in design. So I'm going to opt for the isometric left option in this case. Now down at the bottom, we have some more parameters. We have the extrude depth. So we can make this really quite pronounced or we can take this right down to be nothing if we want. I'm going to opt for or about 100 point in this example. Lastly, we have surface options, so we can change this to be a wireframe or have no shading, but for this example, again, we're going to stick with plastic shading as this is going to help when it comes to applying color. So now I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, and you can see this is still live text. So if I hit T on my keyboard to get my type tool, I can select into this text and change it to my liking, and it's going to apply the effect accordingly. So this is really really cool. However, I am going to have to convert this to outlines to make the edits that we're about to look at. So to do that, I'm going up to object and expand appearance. And you can see each of the shapes being created with this effect are now converted into vector paths. So what I need to do now before I can start editing this is make sure it's all ungrouped. So if I right click, I might have to do this a few times as this effect will create a few groups when you use it. It's also worth noting that if you're creating text with any curved areas that there may well be clipping masks as well so be sure to right click and check if there is a clipping mask where it says make clipping mask here it should say release clipping mask so make sure to do that as well and you'll be able to edit each of these shapes individually so as you can see if I click on any one of them now it's its own shape which I can now edit and similar to our recent video on the color guide this is what we're going to use to apply some color to this text so starting with these front panels, I'm just going to double click in my fill tile here and we'll pick a color, go with something bright like this. I'm going to go over to my color guide. First thing I'm going to do is just add some more steps between the colors. So I'll go up to seven and click OK. And I'm really just using these grayscale shades to determine how light or dark to make these. So I'll start with the lightest options here. We'll go with these two panels on the letter X and we'll pick a much lighter tint of this pink color. Next would be the top facing panels and we'll go in between that slightly darker. Now we've got the right facing panels again slightly darker still so we're still getting this feeling of depth here and lastly we have these two panels facing down the way on the X which need to really be darker than anything else and this is what we're left with. Okay so that's it for our first example. Now to create this outlined version there's a few more steps that we need to take so I'm just going to select all of this and holding option or alt on a PC, I'm just going to click and drag off to the side to create a duplicate. Now you'll see that 
a lot of the shapes that have been created are overlapping with one another. So if I'm just to convert this to a stroke instead, let's pick a new color here, click OK, and I'm just going to get rid of all the fill colors and I'll bump this up in stroke weight to also round off the corners. As you can see, we've got a lot of overlapping paths. So this is where I'm just going to use my shape builder tool over on the left hand side. The keyboard shortcut is shift M and we're just going to merge some of these panels together to get the desired effect. An easier technique for this is to go into our outline view, which is command Y or control Y on a PC. And this is just going to declutter what we're looking at I'm going to make it a little bit easier to make these changes. So I'm really just going to start with these front facing panels as that's going to make things a bit easier, making sure that there's no overlapping paths at all. And there will be some small sections that you need to make sure are joined up. So you may need to zoom in a bit for this as well. Okay, so now that we have applied those changes with the Shape Builder, if I press Command Y again, we're back to our normal view and you can see we've got our outlined text now as well and this is looking much better. So that's it for creating three-dimensional looking text with the help of the 3D effects in Adobe Illustrator. So there you have it. The 3D effects in Illustrator are really useful and can produce some very eye-catching results. And if you have any questions, then drop a comment down below and we'll do our best to help. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you one, how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, two, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, three, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, four, how to pick the right colors for your designs, and five, how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.